Motion left. First carry for the five ten. They do go for it. It's Breeze. On second down, here's Breeze. On third and long, it's Breeze. I get a couple of first down. Just something to build off of. That's what we're looking for. And it's tablets here. YouTubers and man fans, this is Mad Mike Shot sniffing out the man cheese as always. I got some plays for you today out of the Bengals defensive playbook. If you guys don't know, I broke down the entire Bengals defensive playbook. It's the only defense I've done so far in my ebooks. Uh, you can get on my Patreon, you can get on my personal website. All the information is in the description below. Uh, but bottom line, the Bengals ebook to me, the Bengals defense, I'm sorry, the Bengals defense to me is by far the best defense in the game. I do plan on doing the Raiders or the Patriots playbook because I want to do a 3-4 uh, a playbook as well. That's probably the next book I'm going to do. But either way, the Bengals, man, this right here is my go-to book uh, that I'm using this year, and I'm so excited to bring you this play, uh, this blitz that I've uh, been mastering for like a month now. Well, I've seriously been putting like so much time into making this this def this uh, this play right here uh, as far as it is. If you guys don't know, I already put out the cover two invert a long time ago. It's a really good base defense. I'll pop up a link for that as I'm talking right now. It should be coming up in the top right hand corner. I'll try to post it in the video description below, um, as well as gameplay of me running these defenses. I'll try to post some some links to that. Um, hopefully, at the beginning of this video, I had some some gameplay. But the one that I'm going to do today that is so nasty is this fire zone three this one right here is like i said i've been working on it and i'll take you through the evolution of this uh defense i've been working on a blitz out of this because like i said i pretty much run the cover to invert all game or at least i did anyway now all i really run is the fire is the fire th zone three there at the bottom so we'll pick that i got another i'll show you another play after this but for now i just want to show you this we'll pick something at random here it doesn't matter i'm not going to run a play so we'll go ahead and we'll bring up the, the diagram. I'll take you through the evolution of this play because, like I said, I've worked on this so long. For a while there, what I was doing was I was basically just blitzing um, this defense or this linebacker, right, which is not the worst play. I mean, it's really good against the run. It's okay against getting heat, but obviously it leaves you a little bit vulnerable in coverages. Uh, what I was doing in that, when I was running that, is I would use this safety because if you look at the cover two invert play that I was showing you, and I think I have it in my audibles here, I mean, I know I have it in models here. I run this all the time. But if you look at this cover two invert play, first of all, it looks like a cover three. So you can run these two plays. Like, you know, you can run these two plays together and nobody's ever going to know which one you're running. That's one of the reasons that I like this. And, you know, basically this whole series and then the second play I'm going to show you too has a very similar look. So that's one of the things that's really cool about this um, is, is you have that... Um, is you have that uh, you can't really tell what it is. There's no pre-snap read that a defender or an offensive player that can, can make to figure out what you're doing. But either way, like I said, at first what I was doing, what I was I was running just like this, and this is just messing us up. And this was like I said, it put a lot of stress on me as a user uh, with this free safety. So I can't say that I was 100% sold on it. But I still do this from time to time. It's not the worst thing in the world because the pressure is going to get there. You typically have six guys going against five. It's going to get there. But that's not how I like run it. The way that I figured out really works best. It was kind of by accident. Every basically every step when you run something enough, every step that that this, improved this was found by accident. But basically, I found out that if I take this middle linebacker here and I move him to the center, it can really get um, some good a gap pressure. You got to do a couple more things before you do this. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through those steps now. Basically, what I would do is I would spread the line first, which is L1 and up on the left stick. I'll try to have this stuff in the description. I'll try to put this down there. Uh, hopefully, I'll remember. And then the other one is spread the linebackers, which is R1 and then up on the left stick. Now all that I really want that to do is here is this spacing is key. This guy right here, before I actually run these plays too, I'm gonna to switch out this linebacker with a speed guy because I forgot to do that. But you want speed at these linebacker spots and neither one of these guys are very fast. So once you spread everybody, that's really gonna help out as far as um, these linebackers getting in because this defense is all about these linebackers getting to the quarterback. Either this guy here in the middle is gonna get a straight A gap heat or this linebacker right here is gonna just loop around and come in untouched. Um, and like I said, I'll put out gameplay at the beginning of this so you guys can see this is a game record defense i could run this against three four wide receiver sets run plays pass plays it doesn't matter uh, you definitely can't run up the middle but either way so then once i spread everything it looks like this now i'm going to basically blitz this linebacker and uh, typically what i would do is you hit l1 twice my bad not l1 r1 twice am i messing this up 
Yeah, R1 twice, triangle, and then down, just so I can I can stay on this defensive lineman, because I gotta do something with these defensive linemen. For a while there, this is how I would run it, and then I would use her, this defensive lineman. This was the look, and then I would just stand up as a zone cover by myself here. And it works out that way too. Like I said, this is the evolution of this play. I went from using the safety to using the defensive end, but then I figured out, and this was by accident one time, um, when somebody snapped the ball as I'm trying to rotate over to the defensive lineman, I got stuck on this defensive tackle, um, I already had the the the, um, the bluff blitz going, which I didn't mention. I bluff blitz this defensive end, which you guys don't know. You got to highlight them, hit X or A, and then over on the right stick the bluff blitz. Uh, but basically, I would bluff blitz them, and then I would just use your. I got stuck on this guy, and I used him, and the sack still got in there. This pressure still got in there. So now this is this is the look. Uh, this is what I'm doing. I'll, I don't take him out of out of a blitz. This defensive tackle, I leave him blitzing. I just basically stand him up. Um, and like I said, if you watch my gameplay videos, you've probably seen me do this without without watching. What I also do is I typically, just to make the guy think I'm cheating, I typically move him back and forth. And the real reason I'm doing that, I have two reasons I do that. I do that to make him think I'm cheating because I want them to, I want to get in their head to think that it's like a nano because it just looks like, this looks like, uh, they used to call it a shake blitz. <laughs> this looks like the old school shake blitz. <laughs> so I do this to mess with people's heads and make them think I'm cheating. And it also makes them, you know, throw the ball away quicker if they're a quarterback or maybe run quicker if they're a quarterback, which is what I want. I want to get in their head. So I do it for that reason, but I also do it because I want to be in motion so I can stand up quicker um, once the uh, once the play starts. And if I'm in motion, it's just a little bit harder. I don't know what happened there. It's just a little bit harder for it to get suction blocked because my ideal position is going to be covering the middle of the field. So like I said, I'm going to run some plays now, uh, but I want, like I said, I want to put some speed at these linebackers. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it and go fix that. Yeah, you really want speed at all these spots. Like here, I put in, um, he's, this guy's an 84 speed, and he's got an 88 speed. I typically have Anthony Barr here. You want your fastest guy where this linebacker is, Jordan Evans. He's an 88, and then I have, uh, I think I have the uh, the GOAT, Ray, uh, Ray Lewis, that you get to pick when you buy the game. Um, so those are my two linebackers. I'll go ahead and I'll pick the play. And I'm going to go random offense, just period random offense, to show you how this works against everything. Now, like I said, I run this against four wide receiver sets. I don't care. Um, so... How do I do random play? There we go. I'm going to go random everything. I don't care. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to set this up. You also want some speed at your defensive ends because obviously they're dropping back in the zones. This is a three, uh, two linebacker thing going here. Oh, look at it. I almost got the user lurk. <laughs> Yeah, I could do. I can. I can lurk with a DT. I don't care. Sometimes when there's a three wide receiver set, your linebacker will start off over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring him in. Um, that's that's a little bit of an issue as far as timing. But uh, the other thing is too. You would think that this guy here would just cover outside underneath this outside guy. But if there's somebody in front of him, he'll follow that back, which is really great. Like these seam flats really cover stuff in front of them well. They won't just disregard that and go outside unless something demands their attention. Uh, but by that point, you as the user defensive lineman uh, should be able to figure it out. Sims is not a good DT too, by the way. I usually have a much faster DT, but we'll go ahead and we'll make this work. So my responsibility is going to be Wallace as a coverage guy right off the bat. So let's go ahead and let's do this. Like I said, I'll typically motion. I can't do that because the computer won't run the play if I'm if I'm moving back and forth. And they can see there. I mean, that's just. I'm saying, where's the guy gonna go? Right in front of him. There's a huge hole, and this guy's meeting him there. So once again, you got that three wide receiver set. So I got to run this guy in. That's the only thing. Could base align it, I guess. But I don't, I don't even know if that's gonna fix it here. Come on, run the play, man. Run the play, get smacked. Oh my goodness, sometimes, look at that, look at that, Just, I mean, the run defense is shut down for real. Yeah, I know it's a lot of adjustments, but uh, believe me, you can get it in. I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, they want easy blitzes, but um, I do it, on, like I said, I do this on like almost every play, because I, I mean, that's probably why I got it down so well. Look at that, boom. That's the guy coming in free, like I was saying. But yeah, one of these two linebackers should get in every time. The running back... Um, I don't know, this guy's not spreading like he should, but the running back should have to pick between the two linebackers and the other one should make it in, so hopefully we can get a good look here. Like I said, I typically would be doing this, but I can't because the computer won't snap it if I do. So here I'm dropping back and here comes the free, the free blitzer right in his face. Now this guy didn't get over. Get, get over in your area, bitch. And uh, sometimes if you get here's another thing when you're when you're spacing this guy if you get into the hole here watch what happens he stands out so you can't get in too close you just got to stand right in the middle right in your area so that he doesn't if he's down that hole he'll move back so keep that in mind and there we go we get that with that free man running in you can also slant him outside I don't think it's necessary though 
um, when, when doing this pressure, so it's your option. But I don't, I don't find it does anything. But you see how that linebacker, look at that linebacker just shoots in. It's game over. So we'll go ahead and run this a couple more times. I want to get a few more sacks, get home a few more times. And here we go. We got the guy coming in free. The running back picks him up, but not long enough. Looks like he was doing a four verticals or something. Yeah, and if you want to, if you want that extra pressure, you could always um, just use this guy, lead the DT down. But I don't think um, it's necessary 100%. I think I, I typically, like I said, when I run it online, I stay using the uh, defensive tackle. But you see there, I left the extra blitzer, and he holds the block longer. And both of those guys got in. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was both linebackers shooting the gap. So, like I said, if you want that extra fifth guy in there, you can do that. You can use the middle by yourself. Here, it looks like we have something weird coming. But there's definitely nobody back there to help Flacco out. Oh, my God. He just he was had to just get rid of that because of the pressure. I didn't see. I didn't see that, but we're going to watch the replay. Yeah, look at that. He's looping in. See, that's the typical look you're going to get. This this guy here, which I haven't shown this in a replay yet, but this guy here, the, the outside linebacker, he's typically going to get a free release. Look at the left tackle over there doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't even, like this year, they've been the, these left tackles typically see that coming and they shoot over. But uh, the way this play works out, he typically is just going to get a free release, and that's that's what I'm going for. And that's why this play is so successful. That's, that's considered the B gap, I'm guessing, where, like I said, sometimes the linebacker will get it, sometimes that other linebacker will get it. Sometimes it's an A gap, sometimes it's a B gap. So, like I said, I'm doing it now with the five man. Actually, I didn't even send this guy on a blitz. This guy should be over here, though, by the way. I don't want him spaced the way that he was. I want him in his area. Like I said, I know for a fact that somebody I was trying to show this to was having trouble setting it up. Did you see another sack? I was trying to show this to somebody on my Patreon, uh, one of my one-on-one -on -one sessions, and they were having a hard time setting this up. So, it wouldn't surprise me if you guys struggle a little bit. But it's definitely easy. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this DT this time. Look at that. Look at that dude just shoots in the A-gap there. Anytime it's a play-action play, the running back gets frozen. They both get in. Um, like I said, I got more stuff for you guys want to check out my Bengals breakdown. It's, link is in the description below as well as on my uh, my private site, MaddenMightyShot.com. Other than that, thanks for watching Madden Money Shit Out. If you need more help or just want to show your support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.